The Nice Guys is directed by Shane Black, co-written by him and Anthony Bagarozzi, and stars Russell Crowe, Ryan Gosling, Angauri Rice, and Margaret Qualey. And The Nice Guys is about two people, one of whom is Jackson Healy, played by Russell Crowe, who is an enforcer. He's pretty much someone you hire if you want someone else beaten up. But he's really deep down someone who just wants to feel relevant and useful in society. And on the other hand, you have Holland March, played by Ryan Gosling, who is a talented but really messed up and alcoholic private investigator. And together they take on a case about a missing girl who is somehow involved in the death of an adult film actress. Now I personally was really looking forward to The Nice Guys because of Shane Black, the director. Um, I personally think that Iron Man 3, which he directed, uh, is really underrated. And if you've never seen his first directorial effort, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, it's a really good movie and you should check it out. So I am happy to say that while I don't think the plot of The Nice Guys is as cohesive as it could have been, it's still a really good movie and it's really, really funny. This is a hilarious movie with some incredible chemistry from its two leads. Now let's start there. Let's start with the actors because they're really front and center here. First of all, Russell Crowe, it's great to see him having fun again. He's clearly having a ton of fun with this character, with this material. Um, he's really able to put in a lot of humor into the action scenes and he's he's definitely more of the straight man in this buddy cop tandem but what makes his performance interesting for me is that he has he brings his real sense of vulnerability to Jackson Healy that really rounds out his character and keeps him from being like a one-dimensional tough guy and then you got Ryan Gosling who is just hysterical in this movie in the tandem he's definitely the more you know he's more for comedic relief and he's really great at it and maybe it's because he's younger but he does way more like physical comedy than Russell Crowe and he's just so committed in this role and he's really really funny and what's so interesting about this character is that he really is a jerk like deep down like he there's more negative to him than positive in my opinion um, but you really understand that he's just in a rut and he's trying to look for any some some sort of redemption in his life but there's one more actor I have to mention and that is Angauri Rice who plays Holland March's daughter and she's great she manages to hold her own in scenes with both Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling and in many ways I think she's the heart and soul of the movie because she's a young kid, she's very spunky and precocious, but she is deep down very good-hearted and keeps both these men grounded. And a lot of the comedy in this movie does come from Shane Black's ability to infuse humor both through dialogue and, like I mentioned, slapstick into the action scenes, which are, by the way, very raw and rough and just better than ever. I had almost forgotten that Shane Black does good action because the action scenes in Iron Man 3 are really cool and it's great to see he hasn't lost his touch here. And what Shane Black does so well is that he balances the tone of this movie just really, really well because there's so much dark subject matter in this plot but he treats it lightly, though not necessarily insensitively. He just finds a way to make this dark subject matter accessible. And the tone of this movie is reflected through the meticulous production design. This movie takes place in 1977 Los Angeles, and you really get to see the sleazy underbelly. Uh, like I said, it does reflect the tone in that on the outside it's very glamorous and shiny, but beneath the surface you can tell it's very dark and dirty. The costume design is suitably hip, the makeup effects for the injuries are gruesome and occasionally over the top, which really reminded me of how Quentin Tarantino uh, does violence sometimes excessively, but you know, just like Shane Black, they don't do it to titillate the audience or to make it just controversial for the sake of being controversial, but they, they kind of do it to highlight the absurdity of their worlds and their stories. And the 70s era is definitely felt as well through the music. There's a lot of great like 70s songs hidden in this movie, like you've got some Earth, Wind & Fire, you've got uh, Escape, the Pina Colada song, which by the way, like I checked the date of release for that song and it came out after 77, so it's kind of inaccurate, but whatever. The editing here by Joel Negron really keeps things paced incredibly well. I never thought of looking at my up at the time uh, throughout the entire movie. And I think the pacing is largely thanks to how the movie is really presented as both uh, Jackson Healy's story and Holland March's story. It's not like one of them becomes the main character and the other one becomes just like a supporting character. You can tell it's really, you know, both of these characters driving the story forward. And what I really like about the editing as well is that every single shot is relevant. Every single detail um, has to do with the bigger mystery at hand. So, you know, whenever you're seeing something, you know that it's going to be kind of important later on. And of course, like I already mentioned, the movie is really, really funny. Just the writing is so fast-paced and all the dialogue is so witty and fun to listen to. Much like many buddy cop movies and mystery films, this is definitely more plot-driven than character-driven, but the characters are just so interesting and they're just they're just imperfect enough to make me want to 
watch more movies with them. Like, I could really watch, like, ten more movies with these guys. As for negatives with the movie, I just have some issues with the plot. For one, the plot does take a lot of shortcuts. You know, for a mystery film, like, pretty much all the clues and leads that uh, these characters get in terms of solving this case are explained to them or just, you know, they bump into them and it's very convenient. So this is a movie that kind of operates a lot on coincidence, which, is, which isn't really the best thing when it comes to a mystery. Uh, some people argue that, you know, it just kind of highlights how they're not very good detectives, but I beg to differ because in the movie they make it a point to show that Holland Marsh in particular is a good private investigator, he's just a drunk. And the other negative I have, which isn't really that much of a negative, is that the ending I think could have been a lot more satisfying. I mean, it's fine the way it is, but it doesn't feel like the movie builds up to the ending. It just kind of happens and you know it's not as exciting as the things that happened before it so that's kind of a bummer however i still do think that nice guys is a really good movie i don't think it's quite as good as kiss kiss bang bang but i can't think of any other of a funnier movie that's come out in recent months so definitely check it out if you're into that kind of dark comedy. All right, so those are my thoughts on The Nice Guys. Have you guys seen it? What do you think about it? Whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.